Shiny offers you a whole bunch of widgets already out of the box. But sometimes that isn't quite enough and you want more. With the Shiny widgets add-on package, you can get way more widgets into Shiny. And in today's video, I'll show you how that works what Shiny Widgets has to offer for you and how you can customize it even further to create custom sliders like this where you have a whole bunch of toggles with associated colors to it. So with that said, let's dive in and check out how this works. All right, so the easiest way to check out what this package can offer you is to install it and then start the gallery. To get started with the Shiny Widgets Gallery, you of course have to first install it. You can do that by using install packages. And I'm really just showing you this here to make sure that you're using a capital W because that can be confusing. But once you've installed this, you can just use this package and then look for the command Shiny Widgets Gallery. And then this immediately opens up the Shiny Widgets Gallery. And if we open this up, in a larger screen then we can see here that we have an overview over all the widgets that you can use with the shiny widgets package and the nice thing is that there are a lot of them and they're all usable right in the browser so you can test them out before you include them in your app so you could click checkboxes to see how it changes value or what the underlying value would be on your server side in your shiny server if you click on this same thing goes for other widgets like this checkbox group here and for all of these examples you also have a show code snippet here that you can click and then you immediately see what the code for this widget that you see here was so that's how you can look at this and now let's look at a couple of specific ones there are some simple ones like the checkboxes we've already seen there are some nicer switches but there are also some more elaborate ones like this select picker here where you have these badges inside of your drop down menu and not just regular text something else i find neat is this search field it is like a text input but when you type something the value doesn't immediately change only when you hit enter do you see that the value of this search text actually changes this is nice when you want to create a search bar but you don't want to start running calculations searching for stuff when someone is still typing there are also some other fancy elements like this multi select tool where you can select countries and they are displayed with their flags but if you look at the value it is just the regular text in here so that way you can have nice looking uis but on the server side of things you can have regular text that you can work with using your code and to understand how this works we can look at the code here and we see here that it uses a function called multi input it has an id just like all the inputs it has labels and then for choices it uses null and instead uses something called choice names and choice values let me actually copy this into my positron window so that we have some nicer formatting here let me make this larger and then let's see what all of this is let me also throw in some indentations here so you can see here that we have choices now but instead of that we have choices names and choices values and for choices values we have just countries this is a vector that just contains the country names and then for choices names we modify these using this apply function to iterate over these countries and then wrap them into a tag list to include an image using the flag icon so that's how you can read this thing and fundamentally this is how you can have something nice in the ui but on the back end you have something that just uses regular text and in the case of the select picker it works pretty much the same you have something nice in the ui but the values later on are just regular text and if we look into the code here you copy this into positron as well format this a little bit then in this case we see here that choices is filled using this batch info success and so on so if we look at just this vector here here the choices are just regular strings but then inside of this picker input function to make it look nice there's also this choices opt list or this choices opt argument that will tell us how to modify the content of the list and here this sprintf function is used to create these span tags so as you can see here it's just a fancy way of writing these batch info batch success batch danger and so on into span 
tags using some specific classes that style them differently. And then this picker input picks up this style. And that's how you can have something nice looking in the UI and something regular on the server side. So that's pretty neat. And now that you understand how to get ideas and how to work with this gallery, let's look at a couple of more widgets that we can use. Let's start out with some simple checkboxes. They are all pretty much self-explanatory. You can click them and then you see how the value changes. Some of them have some color in them, some of them don't. And the way the coloring works here is that inside of the code, you'll just have to set the status to one of the things like primary, info, and so on. You can see here that this doesn't have a status and it's just a regular thing. With the status warning, you get this yellowish color inside of the widget. And for example, with this widget here, you can see that the status is success and then typically it is some green color. Here is a red color. That's where you can see that, okay, there's a status danger and that's really most of the statuses that you'll need. And that's how you can colorize them differently according to your app's theme. So these are some checkboxes. You can even have them with some fancy little animation. As you click on them, they kind of snap into it and you can select multiple ones. Or if you want to have a group, but only make it possible to select one, you can use one of those radio buttons. And sometimes you can even use toggles instead of these radio buttons that change their looks according to what was selected. Cool. So now we have learned about checkboxes and radio buttons. This is already kind of a nice polish compared to the standard ones, but there's way more in this package. In fact, there are a whole bunch of buttons and drop downs that you can use with this package. And also there's a whole bunch of super sweet alerts that you might want to include into your app. As we look onto these buttons here, we see that we immediately can have a whole bunch of buttons. And as we hover over them, we see that there's even some animation going on as our cursor moves over the button. So that's pretty neat if you want to have something that feels interactive to the user. So you can use all of these buttons here and all of them work pretty much the same. They use this action button. They have a color argument where you can once again use these status things like danger or success and so on. And then for the style, you can choose choose one of the existing ones like fill here, jelly, gradient. You see here the stuff that is always in the label is also the style that is applied. And some of them come even with a very fancy animation like the unite one here. This one, well, unites these two colors as you hover over the button. So these are some pretty slick looking buttons if you ask me. And if you look into the drop downs, one thing that I think is really cool about this package is how easy it makes it for you to nest complex elements into a drop down menus. For for example, here is a drop down menu button and you have a whole bunch of other inputs in here. That's not necessarily easy to do if you don't have this widget for you, so I'm glad that it is there. Similarly, you can have this slide in and slide out, which is also kind of a cool animation, but there you have to be careful that the user knows that he has to click on the button again to get rid of this thing. But if you wanted to, you could also add a tiny bit of JavaScript on top of that that clicks on this button as the user clicks somewhere else or presses escape or something. So there's a lot of stuff that you can put on top of these elements or these widgets that this package already gives you. And one of my favorite things about this package is the alerts that it allows you to use. Namely, we could press a button like the success button here and get a nice success pop up message that shows us with a smooth little animation that we have done something successfully. Same thing works for an error or a warning or an information. And the code is also always the same. It is just some sent sweet alert code that you have to call whenever you want to have one. Here, all of these codes were tied to uh, buttons, but fundamentally you can send these alerts whenever you feel like it. One thing you have to watch out for though, is that you use this use a sweet alert function once inside of your user interface, because this will enable all of the JavaScript that has to be there in the background to be available. If you don't use this function, then you might use the send sweet alert function later on and wonder why this doesn't work exactly like here and then the reason is that you probably forgot to use this function inside of your ui it doesn't matter where you use it you just have to throw it in there somewhere nice with that we have covered a whole bunch of elements and there is way more inside of this package but i don't want to go through all of them but i do want to show you what kind of sliders you can use from within this package 
And then also I want to show you one more slider that isn't even documented in the gallery. Let's check it out. I particularly like that you can have sliders here which use categorical variables so that you can do stuff like this Likert scale here. It even allows you to restrict choices which can be sometimes useful. So here right now my slider can only move from the letters ET. And the code for that is also very simple. It's just a slider text input. It has all of the regular arguments you'd expect but then it also has some from minimum and maximum and if you have multiple sliders or like multiple things you can drag then you have the double amount of minimum and maximums if you want to risk them so fundamentally it works like you'd expect from a slider but it has some nicer features that the default shiny slider doesn't have and if you don't want to use these categorical variables here you can also use it for numeric stuff but here you still use very specific numbers you can see that in the choices that you have some specific numbers in here that you go through. Nice. So with that, we've also covered a couple of sliders that this package gives you, but there's way more in this package and I don't want to show you all of the things. You can click through all of these tabs here yourself, but there's one thing that for some reason isn't inside of the gallery and that's what I want to show you next. Namely, I want to show you a different kind of slider. If we look into Positron again, we can close this for a second and then in the shiny widgets package, we can look for slider and there's a function called demo no UI slider. So let's call this. This one is another demo app. It even comes with the full code here. And here you see that we have sliders that we can also use. And in this case, this little app here chooses RGB specifications for the color that is rendered here. So if we want to have a lot of blue, only a little bit of green and only a little bit of red. And we see here that the color has a whole lot of blue in it. So that's a neat little slider that can be arranged in reverse order. And you can always see from the amount that is colored how how much of this value is used here. So if we can use only a little green, little red and a lot of blue, then on the left side we have a very similar color again. So that's neat, but that's not why I like this slider so much. The reason why I like this slider so much is because we can have arbitrarily many toggles to drag on this slider. And let me show you how that works. Let's just build a little dummy app. Let's go in here, let's delete this and then let's throw in a shiny app and in there we can also load the shiny widgets package and in there we can use the no UI slider input function this will give us these exact sliders that we've just seen and then you specify an ID a title and then you specify things like minimum maximum and now the crucial thing for the value you can select multiple ones here I've just selected four and then we can also specify how wide this thing should be and then if we print this close our current app and rerun this then we see here that we have a slider with four toggles just like we have specified in our value argument. So that's pretty cool but there's more. If we look at the code of this, so if we open this up in our browser, we can see here that these colored elements they are just little div containers that we could possibly style if we wanted to. We could throw in some CSS instruction on top of that. For example we could say for this one here this is the leftmost colored bar we could do background is red. This one here should be background is yellow and let's do this one as green here background is green just like a traffic light so that's something we could do but of course if I refresh this page then everything is reverted back to normal so let's make these changes permanent and for that we just have to see that all of these div containers have a class called no UI connect and they live within a div container of class no UI connects with an s at the end so to style just these little div containers we just target div containers of this class let's try this so let's throw in tags, namely a style tag. And in there we could say that a div container of class no UI connect should have an orange background. Let's try this. We close our app first. Now we see that we have orange in the background. But of course I want to have different colors for each one of those div containers. So I can use the end of child selector and say that the first child of these children here should get the color orange. And if I do so we see that only the first one gets this orange color. Naturally we can do the same thing for the other containers as well. So let's do 
color 2 and 3 here. Let's use color yellow in here. And in here, we can use the color C green. And now if we rerun this, we see that every container has a different color. So now it would be need to also color the bar in the background. If we look in the code, we see here that this div container, it is this whole thing that is in the background. It is one connected line, so we cannot just assign one color. But what we can do instead is to use a linear gradient in the background and say that it should go from one color to the other. And we make sure that the breakpoint of the color transition is right in the middle of this bar so that it looks like these outer parts are styled separately. Let me show you how that works. Really, we can just use the exact same code as before, but this time we target the other div container, the one with the S at the end. And then in the background, we say that we want to have a linear gradient. And in there, we want to say that it's a linear gradient from left to right, that's 90 degrees. And then we want to have a red color for the first 50%. And then right after this, we want to have a green color for the next 50%. And that way, if we re-execute this, we see now that we have a whole bunch of colors. And as I drag this whole thing, the colors also move with it. And it now looks like every little part here has a separate color. But of course, since you know the trick, you know that if I go over the 50% line here, there is this transition from red to green. This is the one we've specified here. But really, in practice, it probably won't matter if you have something like this, because if you use these many sliders, you likely don't want to drag the first one all the way to the other half of the slider. And if this is a potential use case, then you could still use a different percent value here. So that way you can use these cool widgets that Shiny Widgets already gives you, and you can enhance them even more to your liking with a tiny bit of CSS and possibly some JavaScript if you also like to use that as well. Fantastic. With that, we have covered a whole bunch of widgets that you can use from within the Shiny Widgets package, and it helps you to make your apps look even nicer. Let me know in the comments which one was your favorite and which one you can't wait to try out. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me also know that in the comments. And now with all of that said, I say thank you for watching and I will see you next time.